Hey, what's up guys? Chad here with the Reptile Rangers. Now we're at the Colonelsville Reptile Zoo and Medical Center again today. And we are going to talk about traveling with, well, we're going to say a pet, but we're going to be specific to the type of pet in this particular case. Um, but before we get into that, right down there in that corner, right down there is our subscriber button. Make sure you hit that and we appreciate you doing so and following along week after week after week. All right. So we had somebody write us in. I guess it's been about two weeks ago now, two, two three weeks ago, something like that. And um, I got to this one a little bit quicker because it just happened to be dealing with some of the stuff anyway. So I'm like, you know what? It was fresh on my mind. I'll go ahead and deal with this video. Um, and we thank them for writing us in asking about this. They were asking about traveling with your reptile. Of course, they got a little bit more specific in their question specifically the bearded dragon because I'll go say traveling with a reptile that I mean there can be many different ways you can travel with many different styles of reptiles there's many different uh, ways to do it there is going to be no <clears throat> real perfect way uh, one way or the other but we're going to talk about some of the ways uh, when you're traveling long term with your reptile maybe five to seven days or more or when you're traveling for just a weekend trip with your reptile specifically the bearded dragon. How do you do it? What all do you need? Well, let's just talk about this. All right, first, we're going to get right into the fact of the basic needs, okay? Their basic needs is heat, light, food, and water, of course, okay? So how do we provide this when we're traveling? Well, in some cases, like think about truck drivers. Truck drivers will have bearded dragons, iguanas, snakes, things like that, especially iguanas. A lot of times they'll just let the iguana sit right on the dashboard. That gives them a great amount of heat as long as the truck driver doesn't have too much of the cold AC blowing uh, inside of the cab. Okay, so for short-term travel, we're going to have things, or you can use things, kind of like this plastic dog or cat carrier, or something more cool, kind of like this uh, Noah's Ark looking uh, carrier. Uh, you can also use the newer model carriers or the new style of carriers that are uh, mesh, uh, kind of like a cloth bag with uh, mesh that have a bunch of zippers uh, for top, bottom, front, sides. They work really, really well. But these are some examples of some short term, like just a couple of day traveling containers and things that you can use for them to be able to be housed in short term. Now, when we start talking about actually how to set these types of things up when you're traveling. Remember, we're talking at the moment about short-term travel, okay? So you can do several things. I mean, we have things like these heating pads, okay? You can do cloth bedding in this. This is already cloth all the way around. Uh, heat pads can go on the inside. You can do the human uh, back heating elements things like that for, uh, for you know, sore backs or for the seats, whatever the case may be, okay? Now, with that being said, just make sure with some of these that you're not running them too long, okay? Now, you can run these in most standard vehicles. They make adapters that go into your cigarette outlet that will actually run most of your household stuff as long as it's not running too much what's called amperage or wattage. Um, if it's running too much, then you have to use something called a power inverter <clears throat> or a power converter. So it converts the power from one uh, to the other when it's just running too much power. But most of these things, most standard simple things like this or a little fan if it was to be too hot, a heating source if it was to be too cold, most of these things will run in a standard uh, cigarette adapting uh, converter that goes from the cigarette outlet or the power outlet into a wall plug-in. Now. When we start talking about feeding and watering and things like that, you can just go as simple as you want to go when it comes to that. Keep your food separate, whatever the case may be, your fruits, vegetables. Uh, and then you give those to your animal, to the dragon, when it's the appropriate time. Keep them on the same schedule as best as possible. Don't change too much of their schedule. But as far as traveling with them short term, I mean, really, you're just talking about, the for them, the inconvenience of they're just not in their normal habitat. They're riding with you. They're inside of a vehicle. Just be mindful that when you're driving in a vehicle, whether it's in the wintertime, that it's, you know, of course, for dragons, it ain't going to no such thing as too hot, not when it comes inside of a car. But especially in the summertime, if you're traveling with them, most people run their AC. So if you're going to run your AC, you have to make sure that at least in, during travel, your guys and ACs in the hotel rooms, uh, in the beach houses, in the mountain, mountain cabins, whatever the case may be, most people keep it comfortable for them. So if you're keeping them in something like this for just a two night, you know, three day stay, something along that line, then there needs to be climate controllability one way or the other. Remember what we said before, that it still needs to mimic the, the natural basics, food, water, 
lighting, and heating, okay? So however you can achieve that, then that is perfectly fine. Now, if it comes to talking long-term travel or you're traveling for long distances, you've got yourself a camper, you've got yourself a bigger vehicle, something like that. Maybe you want to do an actual smaller habitat. Um, you can set up a, what, would be, what would be considered a temporary habitat, especially in campers, most of your fifth wheels and your pull-behinds, your bumper pulls. Most of those have more than enough space. You can set up a 20-gallon, uh, maybe even some of them are big enough. You can even set up a 40-gallon, but and, you know that, that can be a little excessive. Um, considering the fact that really Really what the habitat is for most of the time is just for eating, sleeping, and essentially getting warm for a few hours of the day to make sure they're having their regular bowel movements and they're getting the UV exposure like they're supposed to have. When you're traveling, a lot of the times people will keep them on them or walk around with them, take them out when they're out and about going to shops and going walking through the woods or whatever. Uh, people will keep them on them. And so in that case, they're getting the heat of the day, they're getting the UV of the day, things like that, especially during the summertime. But again, we're talking about just simple methods of the best ways to travel with your dragon, and there really is no full, complete, perfect answer to that. Just the answer and the best answer for that is making sure their basic essentials are met, whether in short term or whether in long term travel, through housing through heating, through lighting, and through eating and drinking water. Of course, bowel movements are going to come in there, so just be mindful of that, uh, especially in enclosed settings and in, in unfamiliar areas. It might not be a bad idea to do more regular warm soaks just to kind of keep their bowels loose and, tr and you control when their bowels ha uh, the bowel movements happen versus them just either crapping all over a cabin, all over your you know camper, or in the vehicle, something like that. And uh, anybody that knows anything enough about bearded dragons knows that that is not a pleasant smell in an enclosed space. So trying to control that is just a little bit better than just letting it happen naturally and then you having to pull over to the side of the road and start hosing that, that container out, especially something like this. Or, you know, heaven forbid you actually uh, allow them in something like that because they crap in that. Yep, that thing's just going on the roof or it's getting tied down to the ladder or something on the back of the vehicle because uh, that's going to have to go through the washing machine. All right. Anyways, now this has been Chad. This is how to travel with your bearded dragon. Just some simple things to do, some simple ways to be able to just take your bearded dragon on either a short couple of day trip or on a more long term, uh, long road trip, maybe cross country, or you're going for a week, two weeks at a time somewhere else. How do you take care of them? The short answer is, on the short trips, you can do simple things like this. On your longer trips, you do need to plan more for an actual habitat style of setting that would mimic what they have at home. But again, this is Chad. We are the Reptile Rangers. We appreciate you following along. This is the Kernersville Reptile Zoo and Medical Center, and uh, we appreciate you hitting the subscribe button. We appreciate you hitting the like button. Hit that bell there. That way it notifies you each time we put up a video. We always put up a video on Sundays and Thursdays. Uh, Sundays and Thursdays every week. We're trying to get uh, keep caught up on a lot of the things that people are asking us to uh, film about and other topics that we are dealing with. Again, we appreciate you following along. We'll either see you here at the zoo or we'll see you on the next episode. Later.